You guys, Mal's dad in Descendants 3 is confirmed. Or is he? Okay, all we know is there's a new cast member who lines up with one major fan theory about who Mal's father is. In this video, we'll share everything we know so far. They've just started filming. It all started with a cryptic tweet from Sophia Carson on May 21st. It just said, "'Twas the night before." Dove Cameron added a post on her Twitter account that said, "'Night before day one of Descendants 3 shooting and can't sleep too excited.'" That's right, May 22nd was a big day for the cast of Descendants 3. Why, you ask? Because that's the day filming started for the newest Descendants movie. Sophia Carson tweeted that she was sitting in the hair and makeup trailer, becoming Evie again, and couldn't be happier. Then she wrote, Hello again, Blue. Fans started freaking out. Alas, the fanverse will have to wait a little while longer before any new character pictures are leaked. Just Jared Jr. posted a pretty great picture of Boo Boo Stewart, Dove Cameron, Cameron Boyce, and Sophia Carson. All we know so far is that they are filming in Vancouver. But we have so many more questions! What will the costumes look like? Will Mal still have those purple bangs? Will Maleficent and the other villain parents make a comeback? Are you guys as excited as we are? New villains. Disney has ordered some new villains to appear in Descendants 3. This has sparked some new theories in our obsessed fan brains about whether or not Mal's dad is confirmed. Or is Disney trying to throw fans off track, waiting for a big reveal down the line? So the best way to do this is just to go down the list of new characters. Here we go. Dr. Facilier Disney announced that Jada Marie will be playing Dr. Facilier's daughter, Celia. They also announced that Jamal Sims will be playing Dr. Facilier. You may remember a previous video we made about a fan theory that Mal's dad could be Dr. Facilier. Here's a quick recap. According to the novel, the Isle of the Lost Evil voodoo master, Dr. Facilier, is headmaster at the school on the Isle, Dragon Hall. That means he probably knows Mal's mom, Maleficent. The question is, did Dr. Facilier and Maleficent get busy? He is master of voodoo magic so it's possible that he was the one in the Enchanted Forest calling Mal's name in the D3 teaser. So if Dr. Facilier is Mal's dad, and it's now confirmed that he has another daughter, Celia, that means Mal also has a sister she never knew about. Hmm, that could be interesting. Smee's twin sons. Apparently, Smee has a set of twin sons named Squeaky and Squirmy, who will be played by Christian Convery and Luke Rossler. You all know who Smee is, right? He's Captain Hook's loyal sidekick in Peter Pan, though there is no mention of the role of Smee being cast in the Descendants 3 film. That leaves us with a big fat question mark. What happened to Smee? Where is he? These adorable kids playing his twin sons are still pretty young, which means either Smee departed way too soon, or he's still out there somewhere. In which case, the fan theory that he could be Mal's dad could still be a possibility. Mal would be the big sister to the cutest twins ever. Kronk is still in the running. We found a behind-the-scenes video of the cast during Descendants 3 rehearsals. There seemed to be a common thread in the silly videos that were strung together. They were referring to Kronk and Yzma, and more than once. The first time Dylan Playfair, who plays Gil, the son of Gaston, is doing a weird voice. Yeah, I can't feel my legs. It sounds as if he's doing an impression of Kronk, and he definitely says the name Yzma. Then it sounds like Dove Cameron is doing an impression of Yzma when she says, WRONG LEATHER! We've said it before and we'll say it again. Kronk would definitely make for some fun moments and hilarious comic relief. But if Kronk is in D3, who will play him? And who would play Yzma? That would make for some entertaining moments we wouldn't want to miss. Hades all right, now for the real reason we're here. Disney literally just announced that they have cast American Horror Stories' Cheyenne Jackson in the role of Hades in Descendants 3. Fans are sure that this confirms Hades is Mal's father. It makes sense. Evil, blue hair like the blue flame in the teaser. A lot of signs point to Hades, but no one has announced that just yet. Most fans think Mal's dad is going to be Hades, but why would Disney give that secret away so early? Dove Cameron even posted a pic of her and Cheyenne Jackson saying they have their Hades. God of the Underworld in a poorly lit sushi dinner selfie. She says she loves Cheyenne Jackson and that he is her dream Hades. She ends by saying she can't wait for us to see what's coming. Again, something's fishy. Do we all honestly think that Disney would give away such a big secret over a year before the film will be released? Almost as if they're trying to throw Descendants fans off the trail with this one. If we all think Mal's dad is going to be Hades, and then they drop the bombshell that he's actually someone else, fans will be blown away, and Disney will get to keep the elements 
element of surprise. Fan theories. There have been a lot of fan theories that could still be in the running. Many people think Mordu is a big contender for the part of Mal's dad. Mordu was originally a human prince, and Maleficent did say in the book that she had a moment of weakness with a feeble human. So that checks out. Fans also pointed out that the blue lights in the D3 teaser could be the Will of the Wisps that led Merida to her destiny in the movie Brave. Some fans did think they heard a Scottish accent when Mal's dad whispered her name. Then there's the theory about King Stefan being Mal's dad. As we mentioned before, King Stefan checks off a lot of qualifying boxes to be Mal's dad. Seems like the obvious choice given the history of Maleficent and Stefan. So what do you guys think? Does the announcement of Cheyenne Jackson as Hades confirm that he's Mal's dad? Or is Disney trying to trick us? Let us know in the comments! If you're like us, you're dying to find out what Descendants 3 has in store for our favorite villain, Mal. Well, once 2019 comes around, you'll finally be able to get some answers. For now, let's theorize on the possibilities surrounding Mal's identity. First time at the things? Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give this video a big thumbs up. Now let's dive right into some of the most convincing Descendants 3 theories on the market. With the Descendants 3 release date being set for the summer of 2019, fans have a a long way to go until they get the full story. But you know we're here to help out with a few theories of our own. If there's one thing we just can't shake, it's the possibility of Mal being a mermaid. But whether she previously knew about her purple tail or not is up for debate. Let's go through some of the possible scenarios that could tie Mal to the darkest depths of the ocean. Is Mal's dad really a human? It goes without saying that many of us have been dying to know who Mal's real father is. This information will soon come to light and anyone who has watched the short teaser can hardly wait for the cat to get out of the bag. The teaser showcased a purple-haired Mal walking through an enchanted forest and stumbling across a floating blue orb. Mal soon realizes that the orb is calling out her name, and as she gets closer and closer, she shockingly blurts out the word, Dad? This came as a shock to many of us, especially since it's been said that Mal's father is a human. So how could a human be able to create a floating blue orb in the middle of nowhere? Some people believe this orb to be a trap, and others think that the truth behind Mal's heritage has gotten scrambled along the way. Descendants 2, The Isle of the Lost, confirmed that Mal's father was indeed human, but could it be that Mal was tricked into this to take her mind off the bigger picture? Since Mal's father is often referred to as someone who shouldn't be named, it's hard to believe that he could be something as trivial as a human being. After all, why would the Great Maleficent be attracted to a powerless human? The theory that Mal's dad doesn't have a magical bone in his body is hard to digest, which is why fans have concocted the theory that he's actually King Stefan from Sleeping Beauty. Should this be the case, this would make Mal and Aurora half-sisters. Come on, you guys remember? She called her Shrimpy and the name just kind of... Stuck. Did Mal make a deal with King Triton? So perhaps one of the biggest curveballs in Descendants 3 is Mal's shocking mermaid tale. Since she's never hinted towards being related to mermaids, we're left to consider the fact that her mermaid tale is borrowed. King Triton is a powerful merman who has the ability to alter the physical state of countless life forms. We clearly saw this demonstrated in The Little Mermaid when he used his trident to turn his daughter Ariel's tail into human legs. Since King Triton and Mal have a common enemy, fans believe that he might have used his trident to turn her into a temporary mermaid. This would make it easy for her to navigate the sea while trying to locate Uma. It's no secret that King Triton and Ursula have bumped heads in the past, so why would things be any different between them and her daughter? For now, it seems as though the real match is between Mal and Uma, so it could be possible that King Triton has granted Mal mermaid powers. Seeing Mal's mermaid tail in the teaser was definitely unexpected, and it left tons of room for fans to speculate. Do you think that Mal and King Triton are working together? Or could their relationship be something else altogether? Watch until the end to find out. I don't want to get married. I want to stay single and let my hair flow in the wind as I ride through the glen, firing arrows into the sunset. Could Mal be a mermaid? It's hard to believe that Mal is a mermaid, especially since her mother is the big and bad Maleficent. This isn't what was showcased in the short Under the Sea teaser though, which has left many of us utterly confused. If there's one thing that struck us as strange, it's how Mal confidently leaped into the ocean as though she'd done so many times before. In the end, the ocean is Uma's playing ground, so why escape her grasp by diving into her waters? While Mal has powers of her own, we never once believed them to be strong enough 
enough to transform herself into a different species altogether. With this in mind, some fans are inclined to believe that Mal is indeed a mermaid. This shines a light on Mal's heritage once more, making us wonder if her father could be a merman of some sort. This would directly contradict the belief that Mal's dad is a human. But maybe, just maybe, this information was fed to viewers in order to distract them from the truth. Did Mal's father use the mysterious blue orb to come clean about her hidden heritage? If so, this could explain why she didn't think twice before diving into the deep, dark, and dangerous ocean. Is Mal's father King Triton? With the way things ended in the Descendants Under the Sea teaser, many fans are confident that Mal's father is none other than King Triton himself. While it is true that the underwater king is known for having fathered countless daughters, he hasn't necessarily done this outside of wedlock. Then again, Maleficent has the ability to manipulate her shape and form, so could it be that she tricked him into fathering her child? This is all speculation of course, but we can't deny that it makes a great deal of sense. Since Mal's father has been a mystery from the start, her real dad could literally be anyone. When you take a deeper look, you might start to realize that King Triton and Mal have a lot in common. For starters, their greatest enemies both happen to be sea witches. And to make matters more convincing, Mal is going head to head with the daughter of King Triton's biggest rival. Could it be that history is repeating itself? Or are we swimming a little too deep? If Mal's father is indeed King Triton, this will cause more questions than it does answers. But in the end, Descendants 3 takes place underwater for some reason. Could another villain be Mal's dad? If there's one thing we aren't lacking, it's theories about who Mal's father is. A fan named Emily took to Twitter to put her theory into motion. She thinks that Mal's dad is none other than the wicked Fantasia villain Chernabog. She believes this to be true because Chernabog and Maleficent were seen hanging out on numerous occasions after the villains took over the house. In her opinion, it looks as though these two were somewhat dating. While Chernabog could very well be Mal's dad, this would make her a demigod of darkness. After all, Chernabog is as evil as they come, so why would Maleficent continuously insult Mal's human heritage? Could it be that she wishes to shield her daughter from the truth? Or is it possible that she doesn't want her daughter unlocking her true potential and overpowering her dear old mom? As some of you might know, Chernabog is the most powerful Disney villain of all time. He's also the most feared and unpredictable character in his category. While some people might see a resemblance between his and Mal's characters, we can't help but think that she deserves a little better. After all, her heart is far from being filled with darkness. Half Mermaid or Demigod Perhaps one of the most popular Descendants 3 theories is the one that places Hades as Mal's dad. Hades is the main villain in Disney's 1997 musical Hercules. Despite having a fun and wicked personality, Hades is evil beyond belief. But then again, we would expect nothing less from the god of the underworld. <laughs> Thirsty? Actor Cheyenne Jackson is the man behind Hades' genius, and we're excited to see what he has in store for Descendants 3. Since he is one of the newest cast members, fans are convinced that he's Mao's long-lost dad. There are many clues to this theory, one of them being that the mysterious orb Mao found in the Enchanted Forest was made out of a bright blue energy. Since this color is often attributed to Hades himself, this theory could potentially make sense. If there's one thing that keeps confusing us, though, it's the fact that Mao is said to be half-human. It would be unlike the Descendants franchise to make us believe that Hades is Mal's father only to pull the rug from under our feet at the end of the movie. So for now, many fans are skeptical about the relation between these two villains. Half-sisters with Ariel? Countless fans couldn't believe their eyes when they saw a gorgeous purple tail attached to Mal's lower half. This is because it isn't every day that your favorite Descendants character spouts fins where her feet used to be. For some reason, the fact that Mal transforms into a mermaid has nothing to to do with magic and everything to do with genetics. Despite being born with legs, Mal's heritage might have kicked in the second she dived into the ocean. But then again, this is all just speculation. While characters King Triton and Ariel don't seem to appear on the Descendants 3 cast member list, fans still believe that these characters could have a correlation. If Maleficent did indeed mate with King Triton, this would make Mal and Ariel half-sisters, which could explain why Mal has some soft qualities and only a hero 
would pride themselves on. Since Descendants fans have been dying to see Ariel and Melody pop up on screen, this family reunion could quickly turn into a tearjerker. Since the third installment of the Descendants franchise has hints of the Little Mermaid, we can only hope for its main characters to make an appearance. But since Descendants mainly focuses on the children of our favorite villains and heroes, this would place Princess Melody at the front line. So if King Triton is in fact Mal's dad, this would make Mal Melody's long lost aunt. For now, there's no way of knowing if the Little Mermaid crew will find themselves in Descendants 3, but hey, there's nothing wrong with hopeful wishing. Talk, dog. Does this vest make me look fat? Mermaids, bears, and human princes. With so many possibilities surrounding Mal's heritage, it's only normal for countless theories to pop up. Regarding it's safe to say that some make more sense than others. Considering what the Under the Sea teaser brought forth, many of us are inclined to believe that Mal's father is a merman. According to a fan named Nat, this is far from the truth. Nat took to Twitter to discuss who she believes to be Mal's dad. And we have to admit that the girl's got some stone cold facts on her Side. Nat says that Mordu, who is the villain and brave, is Mal's real dad. And here's why. For starters, Mordu was once a human prince, which could explain Mal's human genetics. Secondly, Mordu eventually transforms into an evil bear, which would make him a villain. This could place him and Maleficent in the right place at the right time. But the most convincing argument of all comes in the form of a tiny blue orb. Anyone who has watched Brave knows that Princess Merida was lured into the forest by a magical blue light which is exactly what was showcased in the Under the Sea sneak peek. By now, we all know that Maleficent sees Mal's father as weak, and if he is in fact Mordu, this would explain a lot. After all, Mordu sacrificed himself in order to free his spirit. There are some fans who swear that Mal's dad sounded Scottish in the teaser, which would directly tie him to the Brave franchise. For now though, there's no way of knowing what is true and what is false. So there you have it, some of the most popular Descendants theories surrounding the franchise third installment. For now, it looks as though Mal being a true-born mermaid is definitely a possibility. But hey, only time will tell. Which theory do you believe to be true? Let us know in the comments and find out which viewers agree with you. At the end of Descendants 2, we were told by Uma that the story hadn't quite ended yet. So we were all thrilled, but not shocked, to learn that Descendants 3 will be coming out in 2019. There have been tons of teasers that have left fans wondering if Mal will end up being crowned queen. Let's start out with a quick recap. Descendants set out to answer one of the greatest questions of our time. What happened to our favorite Disney stars after the credits stopped rolling? We learn that Belle and Beast have gotten married and now rule over a kingdom known as the United States of Aradon. They have a son named Ben, who is naturally next in line to inherit the throne. Over the course of the first film, we see Ben falling in love with Mal, the daughter of the great sorceress Maleficent. Despite all of the subterfuge and spellcasting, these two managed to fall for one another and begin a relationship. And even though Maleficent ends up crashing his coronation, he still ends up with a crown, making him king of Aradon. In the second movie, we see Mal is struggling to live up to what a king's girlfriend should be like. Things eventually get so tense between Ben and Mal that Mal retreats back to her former home on the Isle of the Lost. The Isle is now ruled by Ursula's daughter, Uma, who ends up kidnapping Ben and holding him hostage. Naturally, this does not go over well with Mal and friends, who hatch a plot to rescue their king. At one point, Uma shows off how much she takes after her mother by bewitching Ben to fall in love with her. However, Mal managed to win him back and the day is saved. Now that these two crazy lovebirds found their way back to each other, could they have decided to finally tie the knot in Descendants 3? Let's keep in mind that even though this is a live action series, this is still Disney we're talking about. Breakups are pretty much unheard of between characters. In fact, it seems like the very moment a Disney character locks lips with someone, they're forever bound to one another. Then they're destined to get married, have kids, and produce a few directed DVD movies. That truly is the tale as old as time as far as Disney is concerned. With that in mind, even though the Descendants franchise is a reimagining, it does follow pretty classic Disney rules, namely that true love conquers all. And when in doubt, just plant a kiss on someone to save the day. In most Disney movies, being a king or queen is seen as the ultimate goal, but ruling a kingdom is a ton of work. It's no surprise that Mal would have trouble adjusting to this major lifestyle change, but again, we're dealing with a place where love really can conquer all. Of course I love you. 
Ben, I've always loved you. Has she and Ben decided to tie the knot, making Mal the queen consort of Aradon? We already know that actor Mitchell Hope will be reprising his role as King Ben, and we've seen him wearing his golden crown. Fans who follow actress Dove Cameron on Instagram may have also noticed what some believe to be a big clue. Recently, she posted a photo of herself with some dedicated fans, and it looks as though she's wearing her Mal costume. And on her head, we couldn't help but notice that there seems to be a crown sitting there. Cameron wrote in the caption that the girls in the photos promise to keep Aspects of Descendants 3 a secret, which means that there could be spoilers in this photo. On one hand, it would be pretty believable if this meant that Mal was going to be crowned queen. After all, people frequently don crowns to show that they're taking on a position of power. But there is a precedent of Descendants characters wearing crowns just because. Take Evie, for instance, who we frequently see with some sort of decorative headwear. Evie is the daughter of the evil queen, but that doesn't necessarily make her a princess. It's revealed at one point that despite her title, the evil queen has no royal status, meaning that Evie doesn't either. If Evie can choose to accessorize with a tiara, why can't her good friend Mal do the same? Now let's not forget that even though Mal is new to the royal life, she isn't a fool. She knows that as the girlfriend of the king, wearing a crown would send a clear message that she expects to be treated like a royal as well. And considering Mal's personality and her reluctance to adapt to royal life, this doesn't seem like something she would do. Unless, of course, she and Ben have tied the knot and she's officially queen. There's no denying that Ben and Mal are each other's one true loves, and they've overcome significant relationship obstacles during their time together. During Descendants 2, we saw them planning a cotillion which would make Mal an official lady of the court. Going through the cotillion, would mean that Mal and Ben are engaged to be engaged. Although circumstances delayed the event, we saw Mal wearing Ben's signet ring. So it wouldn't be surprising to see the cotillion take place or learn that it happened off screen. We also saw Mal transform into a dragon for the first time and fans had mixed reactions to this. Some believe this proves that Mal's evil side isn't as gone as she would like it to be. But director Kenny Ortega disagrees. He believes that the dragon simply represents a powerful side of Mal and that it emerged when it came time to protect someone she loves. If turning into a dragon for someone doesn't signify a serious relationship, we have no idea what does. Disney also released a teaser on Instagram that shows Mal standing in front of a castle. Could this be their way of confirming that Mal is going to be queen in the third movie? We have also heard rumors that we'll finally learn the identity of Mal's father in Descendants 3. Dad? While we can't wait to learn who it is, it would make sense that he shows up just in time to walk his daughter down the aisle at her wedding. Considering all of the evidence, the storylines, and Disney's history, it would honestly be pretty shocking if Mal didn't end up as queen. If she wants to be with Ben, and it's clear by now that she does, she's gonna have to end up accepting the crown at some point. Plus, in the third movie, we're getting introduced to tons of new characters, meaning that Mal and Ben's romance will likely be taking a back seat to other plot lines. What do you think will happen in Descendants 3? Drop your theories in the comment section. Disney's Descendants 3 is coming in 2019, and they dropped a huge photo that has everyone talking. Let's take a look at the theory that Mal and Uma are becoming besties. We can't wait for the release of Descendants 3, and we know you can't either. Subscribe today to keep up with all the news surrounding the new movie. The Bombshell On July 20th, 2018, Disney released an awesome D3 Deets video with a bunch of awesome photos from the set of Descendants 3. These D3 Deets videos give us life. We love seeing shots with director Kenny Ortega, Dove Cameron, Sophia Carson, and the rest of the cast. We got some amazing shots of the core four being friendship goals. We even got a look at the dog who plays Dude. But one photo in particular left us shook. In one photo, Mal and Uma look Look particularly buddy buddy. They are fist bumping and grinning at each other. Say what? Did your jaw drop like ours did? They are basically mortal enemies in the last movie. And now we see this crazy AF peck from the set. We have so many questions. Seriously, Disney just drops a bombshell like this with no explanation? They must know we are absolutely crazy trying to figure this out. And they succeeded in getting everyone talking about it. As you can imagine, this photo led to a lot of fan theories on the Twitterverse. 
Artist. Fans of VKs are totally shook over this photo, and so are we. We've dissected what this photo may mean for the relationship of Mao and Uma in Descendants 3. The backstory. Let's throw back to Descendants 2 for a quick refresher. If you haven't seen the second movie, spoiler alert, basically, Mal is feeling like she doesn't belong in Aradon. She gets all this attention from the press because she's dating King Ben. She even dyed her hair blonde to fit in. Don't worry, Dizzy totally fixed that for her. After Mal gets caught doing magic by King Ben, they get in a huge fight, and Mal goes back to the aisle, leaving behind Ben and her three best friends. This is where we meet the fierce and unforgotten Uma, daughter of Little Mermaid's Ursula. She is a lifelong rival of Mal's because Mal rejected her from joining her gang of villain kids. Um, rude. Of course, Mal hadn't quite discovered her good side yet, but their hatred for each other goes way back. While Mal is away in Aradon, Uma gets her chance to take over Mal's old territory. She's a pirate with her two cronies, Perry Hook and Gil Gaston. She kidnaps Ben and there's an awesome sword fighting showdown between our core four and the pirates. But Mal still feels like she doesn't belong on Auradon. Somehow, Uma then sneaks a love potion to Ben after Mal loses her spellbook on the aisle. We still have no idea how she managed that, but Uma says she dove into the water while the magical barrier was open and swam to Auradon pretty easy for the daughter of a sea witch. Mal is totes heartbroken, but then she sees the stained glass picture that Ben designs. She realizes Ben totally loved the real her all along. Mal breaks the spell by kissing Ben, because true love's kiss works every time. They are seriously relationship goals. Uma and Mal have an epic showdown. Uma turns into a giant octopus and Mal suddenly becomes a dragon. Ben jumps into the water to stop their fight, and octopus Octopus Uma swims off toward the aisle. After a huge musical number, Uma looks at the camera and teases us, telling us that wasn't the end of the story. Ah, uh, we remember exactly how we felt when we knew there was a possibility of a third movie. Now we are trying to figure out exactly what the rest of the story is. The photo. Okay, let's talk about this huge bombshell that Disney dropped on us. We are going to totally overanalyze this thing because we are so shocked. Mal and Uma are walking side by side through a garden or forest. They are looking right at each other, and they don't appear to hate each other. In fact, they are smiling and throwing each other a fist bump. They don't even look like frenemies, they just look like friends. Evie is behind them looking on, and we can't quite make out her expression. Is it jealousy? Or is she happy too? We just don't know. Behind Evie is Harry Hook, who is looking behind them. Maybe he's being a lookout. Is this the same forest where Mal sees the blue light from the teaser? Why are they together? So many questions. This photo is amazing, but it leaves us with way more questions than answers. We love that we get to see an awesome view of their new looks. Does a new look mean a new friendship? The D3 Deets video has another photo with Mal and Uma, this time with the smiling Harry and Gil. Uma appears to be talking about something and Mal looks shocked, but they still don't look like they hate each other. Are these photos from behind the scenes or are they still shots from the actual movie? We have no idea and it's driving us crazy. So we have known for a while that Uma is returning in the new movie, but this is really our only hint as to what her new role will be. We know that there are a ton more villains, so we don't know how much power Uma has left on the aisle. We also know Mal will be meeting her dad. Do you think Uma plays a role in that reconnection? Whatever her role is, we know Uma will be just as fierce as she was in Descendants 2. The Tweets Twitter was on fire after this photo dropped. Some fans had questions and others had theories. No one could stop talking about this pic. Twitter user at Blossoms Choney tweeted China Ann McLean, the actress who plays Uma. She asked what Mal and Uma's relationship was going to be in the new movie. China replied with just one word, complicated. Could that be any more vague? We guess that makes sense though. Mal and Uma have hated each other their whole lives. We can't expect them to instantly become friends. We're sure there will be a frenemy stage at the very least, but couldn't China give us a little more to work with? Another Twitter user, at Alibulada OT5, asked if Evie is jealous of Mal and Uma. We didn't get an answer for this, 
What do you think? Do you see jealousy on Evie's face? Evie's face is kind and unreadable. Is she giving Uma evil eyes? Is that little smile genuine or fake? We'd like to think Evie would be happy if Mal and Uma made friends, but she certainly wouldn't want Uma encroaching on her BFF territory. Don't mess with Evie's people. She's bestie goals. At least one person thinks Evie looks really angry. At Swan John, he's so nice, tweeted a photo of an angry penguin, implying that's exactly how Evie looked. How hilarious is that? Evie would be so offended to be compared to a penguin. Don't you think she is too pretty for that? And at Jabe2019 tweeted the actress with a detailed plot question. So does this mean Mal is going to need Uma's help and they make up and Uma joins Aradon? Dove Cameron just tweeted back. Ha 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 ha. Sounds like that might be a no. But she still didn't confirm if Mal and Uma become friends. Or maybe she's laughing because this fan figured it out. At Jabe 2019 went on to say she is so excited for Descendants 3 and that she can't wait and has so many questions but no answers. Girl, same. Twitter user at Aaron Mahajan 123 is sure that Mal and Uma are legit friends in the new movie. And Nadia Yara 13 seems to agree. And at Beyonce Laurel is just as shook as we are at this possibility. The emotions about this photo are running high on Twitter. Theories. There are so many possibilities and they are all pretty crazy. One scenario involves Mal needing Uma's help. We know Mal meets her dad, who we assume is Hades. It's totally possible that Mal needs Uma's help to get to the underworld to meet him. After all, he is king of the underworld. We also know there is another villain and his daughter making an appearance, Dr. Fasilier from The Princess and the Frog and his daughter, Celia. And there is photographic evidence that Audrey's return will be way more wicked. It sounds like the Isle of the Lost might be getting a little crowded. With so many more villains, it's possible Uma doesn't have the influence she once did. Will Celia be her new VK rival? Is Dr. Fasilier going to voodoo himself into power? Another theory is that Uma comes to Mal for help. Mal is super powerful, obviously. Since she can return into a savage dragon, she's definitely a force to be reckoned with. And she is way stronger than Harry and Gil, who are sometimes a little too goofy. It's totally possible that Uma has to bite her pride to ask for Mal's help to get rid of some of those new villains. That would be super cool. Do you think Mal would offer to help Uma pretty easily? Easily, or will she take some convincing? Some of the fans seem to think a partnership with Uma and Mal would make Evie super jealous. At Alibulada OT5 warns Uma to watch out for Evie because she is crazy protective of her bestie. We all need an Evie in our lives, don't you think? We have a feeling Uma really would not like Audrey, and we know Mal doesn't really care for her either. We could totally see the two of them teaming up to take down a villainous Audrey. That showdown would be whack. Of course, it's totally possible that this photo that has everyone on fire is just a behind-the-scenes shot. We know Dove Cameron and China and McLean are friends in real life. Maybe the photo was snapped after the camera stopped rolling. Disney probably knew exactly what they were doing when they shared this photo. Now everyone can't stop talking about Descendants 3. We know Uma must have some good in her. If King Ben saw it, it must be there. Maybe her chance at redemption lies within a friendship with Mal. It seems like a perfect fairy tale story to us, don't you think? Some people have speculated that Mal might still have a streak of evil in her. Is it possible that Mal has to go back to her wicked ways in the new movie for some reason? After all, she did turn into a Maleficent-style dragon at the end of Descendants 2. Director Kenny Ortega said that the transformation was more about being protective of Ben and her friends than being wicked, but we do know that Mal will do absolutely anything to protect her loved ones. She's fierce AF. There's a good chance she'll have to tap into her bad roots to save Aradon one last time. More fan theories. Disney Channel has done a great job of keeping the storyline of Descendants 3 under wraps. Too great of a job if you ask us. We are searching for every tidbit we can find and we're feeling Descendants desperation. There are several other fan theories out there about the plot of the new movie and they don't all have to do with Uma and Mal. We know Mal somehow meets her dad in this new movie. We don't know whether she'll meet him at the beginning or at the end. And while most people are pretty sure her dad is Hades, a few people disagree. 
In the 2014 live action film Maleficent, the sorceress has been involved with King Stephen, if you know what we mean. But we aren't sure Disney Channel would include an infidelity storyline, and if that were true, then Ma would be Audrey's aunt. That might be enough to turn Audrey evil, but this seems a little too PG-13 for a Disney Channel original movie. Another theory is that Mao's dad is the king who was turned into the bear, Mordu, from Brave. The fans who believe this think that the blue lights in the forest are the same will-o'-the-wisps that take Merida to her destiny in the 2012 film. We don't know how likely this is, but it would be awesome to see an underrated movie like Brave getting some villain love in Descendants 3. And we would love to see a fiery Merida in Aradon. One last theory about Mal's dad is that he is the Horned King from The Black Cauldron. This is based on the blue flame that we see in the Descendants 3 teaser trailer. There are a couple of theories surrounding Audrey's wicked new look. We know she has Maleficent's scepter. Did she pick it up at the end of the first movie when Maleficent was defeated? One theory is that she really has gone wicked and is out for revenge. The other is that she is under some magical spell that is causing her to act this way. Either way, evil Audrey is going to make this movie awesome AF. Which theories do you think are true? Do you think Mal and Uma are going to be friends? Or was that just a behind the scenes shot? Don't be shy, let us know in the comments. Descendants 2 left us with so much unfinished business and new stories to be told that we can't wait to see what is coming next in the following movie. No one even confirmed that we were ever going to see Descendants 3, but it doesn't hurt to talk about all the things that fans want to see. Stay tuned until the end to know more about Mal and Harry's secret story. Uma's Unfinished Business we all remember the end of the second movie. Just when we thought that everyone was going to live happily ever after, Uma surprised us by saying, You didn't think this was the end of the story, did you? This is the same thing that Mal said at the end of the first Descendants movie, and we all got the chance to see the second film shortly after. Does that confirm that we are soon going to see Descendants 3? Unfortunately, nothing is guaranteed. That's because this line wasn't even in the script, so it was not even supposed to be there. No one knows if there is going to be a third movie yet, as the the director, Kenny Ortega, said that they are still waiting to see how the fans will react. No matter what, we know that there is still some unfinished business with Uma and we want to see what is coming next. The actress China Ann McLean wants to stay a villain, so we can totally imagine Uma trying to make an unfair agreement with Mao, just like her mother did in The Little Mermaid. After all, she was not interested in coming to the good side when Bin gave her the opportunity, but she can always change her mind as Cameron Boyce, who plays Carlos, thinks that she could come to their side and they would all fight their parents together. No matter what, we absolutely need a third movie to see who was right. Hey guys, we are so excited to announce we are producing our own original content. Head over to the Trendy for the best DIYs, fashion tips, makeup hacks, and so much more. We are sure you're going to love it. And be sure to let us know what you think in the comment section. We love to hear from you. See you there. Carlos and Jane It took a whole movie for Carlos to finally ask Jane to go to the cotillion dance with him. He was so shy that Mal tried to give him a candy that would make him tell the truth. But dude, the dog ate it and started speaking in English. It was the best thing that could happen to him at the end, as man's best friend convinced him to talk to the girl that he loves, saying that if she doesn't love him back, it means that she is not the one. And we are really happy to see them together at the dance, even though the fairy godmother didn't even understand that they were together. Together. No matter what, they were ready to live happily ever after. But with these two, we know that it's going to be really interesting. This is why we want to see how they are going to be dealing with their new relationship in the next Descendants movie. Now, all we need is for Jay to find a soulmate too. He went to the cotillion dance with Lonnie, but they were probably just friends at the time. This is why we want to see what will happen between these two, or even if Jay will ever find another special someone. Oradan is the best place to live a fairy tale story, and we hope that every villain's kid will have the chance to know what love is. Dizzy's Opportunity as soon as we saw Dizzy, Lady Tremaine's granddaughter, working as a hairstylist on the Isle of the Lost, we all wondered what she was doing there. The young girl was too nice to be a villain stuck on this island. Actually, she was only the victim of her family who treated her like a servant. But we think that they were just jealous because Dizzy has everything it takes to be a princess. She wanted to go to Oradon so badly that she gave all the accessories that she made to Evie. She thought that if her friend wore them, she would feel like she is part of Oradon too. 
Dizzy thought that she couldn't be happier when Evie said her name on the red carpet, but something even better was coming next. She received an invitation reading that she would have the chance to attend Aradon Prep. Evie didn't only ask Ben to let Dizzy join them, but she also wanted to give this chance to many other kids who lived on the Isle of the Lost. Do you know what it means? We could see a lot of new characters in Descendants 3. Director Kenny Ortega even said that every once in a while he thinks about new characters. We hope that we will also get the chance to see characters from the animated series like CJ Hook, Freddy Fasilier, and Zevin. Who would you like to see in Descendants 3? Don't be shy to answer in the comment section below. Lonnie's New Challenge as soon as we saw the sword fight, we immediately noticed someone who stood out from the others. Everyone was surprised when this person revealed that she was actually a girl. But then, when we saw it was Mulan's daughter, Lani, we knew that it totally made sense. Unfortunately, she didn't have the chance to join the swords and shield team because she was a girl and it was against the rules. It didn't stop her from saving Ben since that day, Jay knew that she would have the chance to sword fight for the school team too. And if she can't be a member of the team, she is going to be the captain. Mulan was probably proud of her daughter who finally defeated the odds without having to hide the fact that she was a girl. Lonnie was one of our favorite characters and this is why we want to see what is going to happen to her in Descendants 3. She was even Jay's date for the cotillion dance and we are wondering if she is ever going to be his girlfriend. But it would be even more amazing to see a young woman who doesn't need a man. We think that all the fans would be really happy if Lonnie could get a little more attention in the movie. She totally deserves it. Mal and Harry's Secret You probably already know that Dove Cameron and Thomas Doherty, who plays Harry Hook, are dating in real life. And if you don't really care about celebrities, you absolutely notice that there was a big chemistry on set when the two were filming a scene together. It almost ruined the scene because these two characters were supposed to hate each other and their connection was too intense. This is why Dove and Thomas decided to come up with a little story to explain all this. Mal and Harry used to date when they were on the Isle of the lost. She was the baddest of the bad, and he was the baddest of the bad, so they made the perfect couple. But then she broke his heart, and Harry decided to join Uma because they both hated Mal. That would explain why these two still have some feelings for each other. It would be great to hear more about this story in Descendants 3. After all, filmmakers need to explain to the viewers why these two characters are acting this way when they are together. Let's just hope that Ben won't be jealous. If you watched this video until the end, don't forget to write Team Descendants in the comments and tell us what you would like to see in the third movie. We'd love to hear what you think. It's all going down under the sea. Whether you're Team Mal or Team Uma, Under the Sea has every Descendants fan on the edge. The trailers definitely revealed some clues, but watch until the end to find out which is the most shocking of them all. Mal's superpowers? Okay, let's get one major clue out of the way. It's pretty clear that Under the Sea will revolve around Uma's revenge. We can't blame her, really. But what does seem incredibly suspicious is the fact that Mal is clearly underwater. Did Disney forget that she's not able to swim? Or is there a deeper meaning to her sudden superpowers? This small little detail definitely changes everything we know about Descendants 3. If Mal can suddenly swim, it definitely does mean that it'll go down in the underworld and we'll be in for an amazing battle. Under the Sea also also makes it very clear that both Mal and Uma will be alive after their battle, as they are both featured in the original movie. But it really does look like Mal will be gaining some pretty impressive superpowers. Let's take it back to the first Descendants movie. Remember when Mal and Ben took a dip and Mal revealed she can't swim? You can't swim? No! You live on an island. The reason behind it was because there's a barrier around the Isle of the Lost that prevents swimming. So this either means that Mal and Uma weren't even on the Isle of the Lost anymore, or the barrier has been removed. Or you know, maybe there's more to Mal than we think. But more about that later. Either way, it's safe to say Mal has some new superpowers. How did she get them? We have a feeling that's what the third movie will actually be about. Will Uma turn good? Disney loves happy endings, and while this isn't strictly a clue from Under the Sea itself, it's definitely something noticeable. Have you noticed how all trailers mainly revolve around Mal, and she actually looks way more powerful than Uma? Maybe this will all be an intervention for Uma, and she'll end up turning good. We know some parts of the movie will definitely revolve around Aradon, so maybe we'll see a different side of Uma, and an unexpected happy ending. We love our pirate crew though, so we're not entirely sure how to feel about 
about this, but based on the fact that Mal looks stronger than ever, it's safe to say that Uma might be in a lot of trouble. Of course, we won't really know what's going on until the actual Under the Sea comes out, so make sure you come back for more clues. But it's safe to say Under the Sea will continue to be Uma's fate. What do you think? Will she turn good? Or would that completely ruin her and her pirate gang's bad image? To be completely honest, we're not entirely sure if we want Harry Hook to get rid of his bad side either, but you can't deny that Disney loves its happy endings. Huge focus on Mal. One thing we do know is that based on Under the Sea, Mal will once again be the main focus of Descendants 3. Surprise, surprise! Of course, she's one of the main characters, so this should be totally expected, but it appears that some fans are getting tired of seeing her storyline highlighted more than others. Under the Sea cast doesn't even include the rest of the main Descendants characters, which gives a pretty good idea on the direction of the actual movie. We know they'll be in the movie, but based on everything that's going on, their parts might be completely minor. Considering we also have Mal's dad in the picture this time. Dad? It's safe to say Mal isn't going anywhere, unless her underwater adventure with Uma ends badly, but we don't really think that will happen. However, there is one clue that we definitely get from Under the Sea, but you'll have to watch until the end to find out what it is. Are you tired of Mal being the focus of all three movies and stealing the spotlight from others? We're never getting the blonde hair back. Hate to break it to you, but that Mal seems to be officially buried in the Descendants' archives. Well, based on Under the Sea, she has completely moved on from her old school look. The new Mal is definitely much darker and way more intense than any other versions we've seen. You can also notice the change in her actual fashion. Mal's clothes definitely evolved from the very first Descendants movie. Her outfit usually featured a very bright shade of green, which gradually faded more and more with each movie. If you look closely at her clothes during the Under the Sea trailer, it's pretty clear that the green is pretty much non-existent. We doubt they'll bring it back for the movie, so it's safe to say we're getting a much darker Mal. But by the looks of it, her darker clothing and hair definitely fit the theme of the entire movie. It's no longer sunshine and rainbows, this is now serious business. And while we thoroughly enjoyed the blonde hair Mal, we totally prefer her darker and mature look. The Underworld By now, the entire Descendants fandom knows that Descendants 3 will revolve in the Underworld. Most people have also managed to put two and two together and find out that the Underworld is where Hades lives. We don't see much of Hades in Under the Sea trailer, but we still managed to get some potential clues about his storyline. But more about that later. The Underworld clue lies in the actual title. While the term Under the Sea means underneath the actual surface, it could also mean way below the sea level. After all, that's where Hades lives, and judging by these awesome behind-the-scenes photos, that's where we're really headed. These belong to JustJaredJr.com, and they really provide more insight into the underworld. And from what it seems like, we'll also get to meet Hades, three-headed dog. It all just sounds like the third movie will be incredibly action-packed. The question is, will the battle between Mal and Uma happen in Hades' underworld or just under the sea? We have a feeling the prequel to the movie will leave us with a cliffhanger, and we won't find out the outcome of their battle until the actual movie. Now that would be the ultimate clickbait, wouldn't it? Music? The music for Under the Sea trailer looks totally intense. Of course, no soundtracks have been released yet because it's way too early. But have you noticed just how much darker these sound effects are? We got pretty much freaked out by Mal's strange voice effects. Come for you first. Come for you first. It's not yet clear whether Under the Sea will even have any music to begin with, and by the looks of it, it definitely wouldn't fit the theme. But what does this mean for the actual movie? Will we be getting much darker music? We all know the Descendants franchise has some head bopping music that's incredibly catchy. There are bops, there are choreographies, but would all of that fit into the Stark theme? This music definitely exists for the third movie, as we've seen Dove Cameron mention she's been recording it. But judging by the Under the Sea trailers, it might look like the music will be incredibly dark. It's safe to say we can say goodbye to bops like Rotten to the Core and Night is Young. Fans have been begging for another ballad like If Only, but based on the theme of Under the Sea, the third movie might just be way too dark for ballads, unless it comes from Hades, which we're totally here for. Descendants Marathon Under the Sea trailers revealed brand new information about the third movie, but you won't be able to find them in the actual trailers. By now, we know that Under the Sea will come out on Friday, September 28 at 7.40 to 7.50 p.m. Eastern Pacific Standard Time. It's going to be some of the most anticipated 10 minutes of our lives. But what's even more exciting is that Under the Sea is a part of a Descendants Marathon. This means that on the day, Disney will be showing us everything about Descendants, including the the movies, of course. 
We didn't think this was the end of the story. But we'll also end up getting some never-before-seen footage of Descendants 3. We have a feeling Disney will definitely drop an official Descendants 3 trailer. We all know that the very first trailer that came out was actually meant for Under the Sea, so they still owe us at least one trailer. The marathon starts at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to catch never-before-seen footage, you'll have to watch the entire thing, as it's not exactly clear when we'll get more information. Either way, this is incredibly exciting. Will you be watching? We definitely will. Is Mal's dad evil? Okay, we have a lot to talk about when it comes to Hades. First of all, how cool is his underworld? But most importantly, on which side is he actually on? Descendants can be very confusing considering the main characters are actually villains. But what does that make Hades? Is he one of the good guys or is he actually more evil than any of them combined? Did you notice that you could actually see the blue orb from the first trailer clearly behind the fake Dizzy and the gang? Perhaps this is a hint that he's actually working on Uma's side and not on Mal. We still don't know why Mal was walking through the forest, but by the looks of it, this was Uma's setup. But since we can clearly see the blue orb, which Mal even recognizes, could that mean that Hades is in on Uma's plan too? We know there's a reason he's not around, but does this mean Mal could be in bigger trouble than we think? Under the Sea will definitely foreshadow how Mal even meets her dad in the first place, and we have a feeling he'll definitely disappoint her. Way darker than other movies. We talk about the dark theme a lot, but we have to point out that by the looks of it, the third movie will be way darker than any others. The sound effects indicate a pretty evil theme, and considering this is a prequel, it's safe to say the movie will follow the same lead. Of course, it still needs to be child-friendly based on the demographics of the franchise, but it just looks like things will definitely take a dark turn. We already have nightmares for Mal's transformed voice. Come for you first. Come for you first. It's only natural for franchise movies to grow and develop. So it's safe to say no one really expected the vibrant colors we saw from the first one. But we still hope Disney will be able to put the perfect balance between the dark theme and the slightly more uplifting happy ending we all love so much. What do you think? Will they be able to get it right or will this be a completely different movie from the rest? We might need several more short movie follow-ups after this just because so much will be going on. Has Mal turned evil? One of the biggest potential clues of this prequel is that Mal has actually turned evil. Of course, she was always evil considering she's a villain's kid, but you know what we mean. She's definitely not as bad as Maleficent, and she's had her endearing moments that have made us all fall in love with her. But after watching the Under the Sea trailers, it's safe to say that something is wrong with the way she acts. She can suddenly swim, her eyes are basically neon green, and her voice makes her sound like she's actually possessed. Is her dad involved, or is it all all Uma's work. Since the storyline will pretty much revolve around Mal, perhaps Disney will put focus on trying to rescue her from whatever situation she's in. Our guess is she's being stuck in the underworld after her battle with Uma in Under the Sea. What do you think? Disney is good at keeping things under the rug, but we promise we're going to get to the bottom of this once and for all. What are your theories about the third Descendants movie? Are you Team Mal or Team Uma? Let's talk it out in the comments. And that's it for our video. Don't forget to subscribe to The Things for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching and see you next time.